back, bookworms. This is Mrs. K. I'm glad you could join me. Have you ever gone somewhere new or tried something new? Makes you kind of nervous, right? Well, today we're meeting Poppy, who's doing both of those things. Let's listen as I read, It's a Big World, Little Pig, written by Christy Yamaguchi and illustrated by Tim Bowers, and find out how Poppy does. Poppy was a pig who dreamed big. She dreamed of being an ice skating star, and then she made it happen. She was star of the rink. Wow. One day, Poppy received a beautiful invitation in the mail. Reach for the stars, little pig, it read. Fly to Paris, France, and compete in the World Games. Paris was far away from Poppy's home in New Pork City. Poppy was excited to see new places, but she was scared about being so far from home. You go, girl, said Poppy's grandparents. Dream big, pig, exclaimed Poppy's best friend, Emma. Follow your dreams, said Poppy's mother and father. And remember... We'll be with you every step of the way. Here's a little something for good luck, said Emma. She handed Poppy a good luck charm. It's a big world, little pig, but remember that everyone smiles in the same language. Poppy smiled, and then it was time to go. When Poppy arrived at the World Athlete Village, she saw so many different athletes from all over the world. Would they speak the same language? Would she make any new friends? Oh my. The village was so big. How would she find her way around? Poppy felt very nervous. Poppy had to find the check-in booth, but she didn't know where to go. She was so nervous, she accidentally bumped into a snowboarder from China named Lee. Do you know where the check-in booth is? Poppy asked. And Lee said, I have a map. Let's find it together. They talked and talked as they walked around the athlete village. They even taught each other a few words in their own languages. Hello and Ni Hao, they said to each other. As they waited in line at the check-in booth, Poppy showed Lee her good luck charm. Cool, said Lee. I have a lucky charm too. And he showed Poppy his jade goldfish. Poppy smiled at her new friend and her new friend smiled back. Emma was right. They both smiled in the same language. Poppy started to feel a little better about her adventure in Paris. Poppy and Lee wished each other good luck in the competition and waved goodbye. Poppy was soon very hungry and decided to eat in the athlete's dining hall. She looked around the crowded room for a friendly face. A skier from Italy named Gianna waved and offered Poppy a spot at her table. Do you like Italian food? We can share, Gianna said. It's my favorite, said Poppy, from pasta to gelato and of course, pizza. Poppy and Gianna talked and talked about food and music and discovered how much they both loved Puccini, an Italian composer. Poppy smiled at her new friend, and her new friend smiled back. Buona fortuna, they said, wishing each other good luck. Aww. It was time for Poppy to go to practice. She was dressed in her competition costume and was a little worried it might be too different. Well, another ice skater was standing near Poppy. She was from Japan, and her name was Kiyomi. 
Kiyomi was dressed in her competition costume, too. It was like nothing Poppy had ever seen. Poppy admired Kiyomi's bold and brightly colored dress. Kiyomi looked at Poppy's spectacular sparkly dress. I like your costume, they said at the same time. <laughs> Poppy and Kiyomi discovered they both loved fashion and designed their own costumes. I dream of being a fabulous fashion designer, said Kiyomi. Poppy knew all about dreams, too. Poppy smiled at her new friend, and her new friend smiled back. Gambate kudasai, they said, wishing each other good luck. It was time for the competition to start. Poppy waited backstage and thought about how wonderful it was to have met so many new friends. Just then, she saw a speed skater from Australia named Zoe. She looked very scared and nervous. Poppy knew just how she felt. When I'm nervous, Poppy told Zoe, I think about what my grandparents and best friend always tell me. They cheer, dream big, and you go, girl. Thanks said Zoe. My friends and family always tell me you can do it. Poppy and Zoe talked and talked about how much their family and friends support them and love them no matter what. Poppy smiled at her new friend and her new friend smiled back. Zoe wasn't nervous anymore because she had made a new friend in Poppy. They wished each other good luck and said hooroo, which means goodbye. Poppy took to the ice. She felt the joy of new friendships and discoveries. She skated from her heart. She knew she would always remember this special trip. Look at how pretty. When Poppy skated off the ice, her mother and father gave her a huge hug. They were so proud of her. I'm so happy you traveled so far, her father said. I'm so happy you followed your dreams her mother said. In celebration, Poppy and her family spent the rest of the week in Paris, the city of lights. They saw the Eiffel Tower and visited art museums. They even ate some French food. Looks like the Mona Lisa. Poppy bought four postcards. She addressed them to Lee the snowboarder, Gianna the skier, Kiyomi the ice skater, and Zoe the speed skater. I'm so glad we became friends, she wrote. Even though we are from different parts of the big world, we all smile in the same language. And then she signed each postcard. Love, Poppy, smiley face. Well, bookworms, I hope you enjoyed this story. Poppy has the right idea. Even though we're all different, we all smile in the same language. Now when you get a chance, go to your local library and check out other books like this or go to a bookstore and buy a copy of your own. If you like reading with me, become an official bookworm and subscribe. Until next time, bye!